One of the most important concepts that you need for your exam is the, how the first ionization energy varies with the atomic number. So we are going to analyze that in this graph that shows the first ionization energy for the first 20 elements in the periodic table. You can see that the noble gases, which are helium, neon, and argon, have a very high ionization energy. Why is that? Because the helium, neon, and argon have the octet complete, well, the uh, helium doesn't have uh, eight electrons in the last level, but it has the level completed the same as neon as, um, as argon. Now, you can see that helium has a higher ionization energy than neon, and neon has more than argon. The reason for that is that argon has more shielding because it has more layers of electrons than neon, and neon has more layers than helium that has only one. Now, if you analyze what happens in this period two and this period three, you're going to see that the trend it has almost the same shape. So we are going to analyze this shape using the um, electronic configurations that I put here on the right so we can analyze what happens. In the first uh, element, hydrogen, uh, the helium has more ionization energy than hydrogen because hydrogen has only one electron and helium has two. So not only the level is completed, but also the sublevel S for the helium is completed. When we jump to lithium, which is the next element, we are going to see that the last electron is the N in the 2s. So we have an electron that is alone in the second level, level and it's much easier to take it out. Not only that, lithium is more stable as lithium ion just because it gets the electronic configuration of helium. So that is going to make the lithium atom very unstable. The next element, beryllium, has the S sublevel of the second level completed. That's why it's even a little bit bigger than boron. In boron, we have the first element, I'm sorry, the first electron in the P level. So in the P level is uh, very unstable with only one electron. Remember that the P level has to be um, stable with six electrons and it's going to be kind of stable when it reaches the, um, the level half field, which is going to be with three electrons. I drew here the S and the P levels for the second, le uh, second level. So in the lithium, we have only one. In the beryllium, we have two. So this electron is going to be more difficult to take that the first one in the lithium. In the boron, we have only one, and we said that that is very unstable. When we go to carbon, it's going to require even more energy, but not as much as the nitrogen, because with the P, with uh, three electrons in the sublevel P, it's going to be kind of stable. Then the oxygen gets only one electron uh, that is paired and the other ones are not so it's going to be uh, it's going to require less energy to take this electron last that was there then the fluorine has seven in the second layer and the neon is going to have the p level completed that's going to make it very very stable after that we know that in the the, after the neon, we have the sodium. So if we make the electronic configuration the sodium of sodium, we are going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. This one has not only more shielding than any of the two level, but also is going to be much more stable when it gets the configuration of the neon losing an electron. In other words, sodium plus is going to be more stable than sodium atom. That's why the electron, the ionization energy is very low. If you analyze in the same way that we did for period two, we analyze the same for period three, we're gonna see that it's exactly the same trend. Now, look at this. You have 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s. Again, the trend is repeated. Um, 
if you look at the values of the uh, ionization energies, you're going to see that hydrogen has a um, pretty higher ionization energy compared with lithium, sodium, and potassium, which are more uh, stable as ions. But anyways, the hydrogen is going to release that electron to form the protons.